When you come from a place of fulfillment, you don't need anything or anyone to fill you up. You're so fulfilled in your soul, in your body, that you don't have the urge to buy things to fill those gaps. This was an entry in my journal from the early days when I started to dedicate myself to minimalism. I have dedicated myself to the idea of minimalism for three years now. And while it was more of an experiment and a project in the beginning, the core principles are an integral part of my life these days. In my last video, I shared with you guys the 99 things I currently own. But some of you have wondered, how? How can one live with such few things? In this video, I'll share the five steps that help me achieve that lifestyle that fulfills me and my need for freedom and simplicity, as well as some tips and tricks that could be helpful to anyone trying to live more minimalistic. Number one, finding my authentic self. In the past, I didn't know who I was or what made me happy. One day I wanted to be a chic business lady, the next day a hip insta girl and so on. And that's how the possessions accumulated. Don't worry, you don't have to know now who you are and that can also change again over the years. But the important thing is to observe yourself carefully during the transition to minimalism. That way you can get to know your true self. What makes you happy? When do you feel good? And when are you in your flow? I also freed myself from negative conditioning and the need to pretend for others. In the past, I wanted to please others and not break ranks. I had to learn that I am perfectly fine the way I am as my true authentic self and don't need to be bent by societal norms. People who really love me, love me for exactly who I am. Number two, assembling a capsule wardrobe. The benefits of a capsule wardrobe are truly endless. One is that it makes it easier to live minimalistic. My wardrobe currently consists of 29 pieces of clothing and six pair of shoes. The pieces are all combinable with each other, so I can put together a wide variety of outfits. Plus, I can layer all of them on top of each other, so I don't get cold even in the winter. Before I had a capsule wardrobe, I often didn't know what to wear. I had a lot of clothes in my closet, but they didn't really combine well. In addition, I also owned many clothes that were made out of bad materials that either made me freeze or sweat. I owned many cheap clothes that were not really suitable for wearing. Today I buy clothes very consciously and I love each of my garments. I look for multifunctional clothes that make me feel comfortable. I'm always happy when I find new ways to combine my clothes into new outfits. My capsule wardrobe also follows a color palette. I mainly wear beige, rosé and black clothes. 3. Use the sharing economy. Even though I own less than 99 things, I live with more things. In the past, I always bought everything immediately. When I moved, I had to buy new furniture. When I wanted to try a sport, I bought all of the equipment and so on. When I discovered the minimalist lifestyle for myself three years ago, I also learned about the sharing economy, especially in the beginning when you may not yet know your true personality so well, it is definitely worthwhile to borrow and share things. That way you can discover what really makes you happy without over consuming. For example, instead of furnishing an apartment by myself, I lived in a co-living apartment. There I only had one room for myself and everything else was shared. I didn't always have everything at hand that I would have liked to have. But that made me also extremely flexible. I learned creative solutions and how to share my things. Another alternative is furnished apartments, or nowadays you can even rent furniture. 
you can book a car as a subscription and share clothes with girlfriends for special occasions. The advantage of the sharing economy is not only less consumption and waste, it also brings something to us personally and that is freedom, less worries and stress. We can change and develop our personality and transform our environment whenever we want. What would you rather borrow than buy? Is it books or games or clothes? Feel free to share it with the community in the comments. Four, choosing smart products. These days there are such great innovative products that help maintain a minimalist lifestyle. I used to own a lot of things that served no real purpose but just fulfilled the void. I didn't look at the material my clothes were made of and owned a different piece for every life situation. I live so well with so few things because many are multifunctional. Here are a few examples. These undershirts serve me as a shirt, a bra and also a sports bra. These leggings are windproof, take up little space and still keep me nice and warm in the coldest winter. This backpack has fold out compartments so I can use it for the office but also for traveling. This necessaire is chic so I can not only store my beauty products in it but it also serves me as a clutch for the evening. This laptop stand can be stuck directly to the laptop, so it doesn't take up any space. And then this vest has 13 different pockets, so it keeps all of my stuff in the right place while traveling. Whenever I buy something now, I look for smart and multifunctional products. I buy quality products and I also like to spend a little more if the item serves me very well. Number five finding fulfillment in learning, creating and giving. The fifth step is that I have found fulfillment in different aspects than material possessions. As I said in the beginning, I was not aware that I own so little. That's because I don't pay that much attention to it. Yes, I like beautiful things, but I don't make my happiness dependent on them. My life is focused on love, joy, and personal development. This simplicity is what makes my life so enjoyable. I used all these five tools during my transition to cultivate a minimalist attitude because as I slowly began to shed my identity as a thoughtless consumer two years ago, I also catched up in the confusion of knowing my true identity and what I was trying to accomplish by decluttering. The questions that inevitably came to me were what is the ultimate goal of living with less and breaking out of the norm? What would I be left with after decluttering and simplifying other than emptiness? I was afraid of seeing myself without all the things that somehow made me me. And I was afraid of not being able to say goodbye to the things that shaped me, that I identified with. Now I know that consumption and the fulfillment of certain roles are not necessarily possibilities that I should reject within myself. It doesn't have to be emptiness that is left behind when you minimize and let go. I've realized that minimalism doesn't have to be all or nothing, but simply exactly what the real me wants and needs. The only difference between my former self and my current self as a minimalist is that I am more conscious of my consumption and my life. What are things that help you live minimalistic? And is such a lifestyle something you can aspire to at all? Feel free to talk about it in the comments. I see you soon. Bye.